I'm hard pressed to call this bike an upgrade because Kawasaki has built this bike from ground up. In my personal opinion, I really like the old Ninja 650. I liked its raw aggression, the versatility and the practicality it brought to the table. But what Kawasaki have done with this new version, this new model, is they have refined and polished all the rough edges of the old version. Having said that, this is not the same mad surge as you experienced in the old 650 because the power delivery on this machine is extremely linear. However, this new engine features new lightweight pistons which have reduced the compression ratio so you can feel the torque kick in as early as 2500 rpm to 3000 rpm. The bike still features 300mm twin pedal disc at the front and a single 220mm pedal disc at the back. But what has made the biggest difference are the brake pads. The brake pads of this one are different and they provide really good feedback, precise fueling and very good response. To start with, the bike in its new iteration has dropped the art pedigree and is more focused on what it really is, a sports scooter. When it comes to styling, the new Ninja 650 boasts of a more slicker look which is in tune with the new generation Ninjas like the 636 or the 300. The headlights, they are rounded but chiseled at the same time. Also it has split seats which gives it a sportier look and then you have the new chassis and the new swing arm which gives the bike or rather keeps the aggressive nature of this bike intact. So now it has the perfect balance of aggression and refinement. The Tank 2 has been redesigned and forms a very important part of the aesthetic feature of this bike. So it has a bigger hump now to go with the aerodynamic styling of the bike. The matte black front along with the glossy green finish of the tank adds a touch of sophistication. I like what they've done with the tail section as well. The new LED cluster looks really really nice. And lastly but most importantly I really like the new paint job which Kawasaki have come up with. This has a more metallic glossy finish to it but I personally like it a lot and I think it goes very well with the overall styling of the bike. The split seat assembly on the new bike is topped with a layer of foam which has really enhanced the comfort level of the bike. And then you have the three-way adjustable windscreen which is a real boon for long tours because then you can still have a really good riding position without the wind blast in your face. From a touring perspective, another thing which you'll really appreciate is that the new 650 is almost vibration free and that's because the handlebars and the foot pegs are rubber mounted. <laughs> the grab rails. The new Ninja comes with just one grab rail for the pillion rider to hold on to his right. If you want the other one, the left one, then the entire set, you'll have to buy it as an accessory. really suffered in corner entry because of two factors. Firstly, because of the poor feedback provided by the front brakes and secondly, because of its lazy steering. Those are no longer issues with this bike. 
But then, at the end of the day, you have to keep two things in mind if you're seriously contemplating buying this bike. Firstly, it is a good 45,000 rupees more expensive than the old version. And secondly, the delivery period for this bike is about six to eight weeks. That's a long wait. But in my opinion, especially in regards to the price, I think you're getting a much better package, a more refined, evolved package as compared to the old version. So if you're in the market looking for a mid-segment sport bike, we at Power Drift feel this is your best bet.